and I believe I have been joined by Sabera and company, uh, and I will turn it over to you to explain this wonderful game that we are about to see. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sabera. I'm uh, graciously joined here by uh, Tuchan, who is uh, also a runner of this game. Hello. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's her. Um, this is a uh, record of Lotus War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. Um, so this is a little bit of a weird game. Uh, record of Lotus War is uh, an anime from the 90s. It's basically like the genesis of anime fantasy. Um, and this is the first Record of Lotus War game in like 20 years. Uh, and it is by the same people who did um, Toho Luna Nights. Uh, and so they love doing uh, shooter mix-ups with Metroidvanias. Uh, so this is a mix-up between Ikaruga um, and Symphony of the Night, basically. Um, so, uh, oh, it might be from the 80s, Manic. You, you, you might be right about that. Um, this is completely stage-based. You don't actually have to do any backtracking in this game. We're going to do a little bit of it. Uh, and this is the any percent run, uh, not the any percent no out of bounds run. So you're going to see a little bit of weird out of bounds stuff. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and hop on in. Uh, oh, and you can start the timer now. I'm sorry. I, right, I jumped start. the gun yeah, a little go. bit. Go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Skip the first cut scene. Yeah, so a nice thing about this game is that it lets you hold start to do the equivalent of text mashing. Um, it is uh, really, really friendly in that way, so we don't actually have to do text mashing. Um, and right off the bat, you can see a lot of Symphony of the Night influences in the way that Deedlet's character is designed and moves. Um, this backdash should look awful familiar, uh, but unlike Symphony of the Night, we do not have a shield in this game. Deedlet does not get a shield. Uh, so um, what that means is that we can't shield cancel our backdashes. So we're basically just going to be doing those straight backdashing uh, until later on we get a, oh, hello, a slide ability. <laughs> um, and the slide ability is then going to form the basis of a lot of our movement from that point on. Uh, for right now, we're stuck with the backdash, which is a little bit finicky. Um, so there are a lot of characters in this game, like all of the characters in this game are from Record of Lotus War. Uh, so we've met Parn, who is basically Deedlet's boyfriend, um, and also Carla, the Grey Witch, who's like, she's basically the centrist of the Record of Lotus War universe. Uh, she insists that everything has to be like neutral and balanced at all times, uh, even if it means killing lots of people. Uh, so um, also all of these enemies are actually from the series. Um, so, uh, so now we've picked up uh, both of our both our fire and wind powers, um, and so now we now the Ikaruga mechanics activate. Whenever we're equipped with wind element, uh, any attacks that are wind element will just be absorbed as MP. Uh, whenever we're equipped with fire element, any uh, fire attacks will be absorbed as MP. There are other elements in the game, so it's not like straight Ikaruga where everything is black and white. Um, but this is like the gist of it. Um, weird thing, uh, there are these hanging meat in various places uh, that we can stab for uh, cubes. Our weapons do have, uh, or our elements have levels, they go up to level 3. Um, and that increases our attack power, and also having an element at level 3 will heal you over time when you have it equipped. Um, here we get into, there are a bunch of bow puzzles in this game. So we have a bow now, right? Um, and you're supposed to cut the cords here, but, um, and there's like ways that you're supposed to do that intentionally, but you can actually just jam arrows into the machinery and clip straight through them. So here we're gonna see some of that drain mechanic. Um, and I'm basically just gonna damage boost through that one. And there's the heal mechanic. We're gonna pick up our first spell of the run, which is Will of the Wisp. Um, we're only actually going to pick up two of the many, many spells available in this game. Uh, oh, whoop. That was oh. a mistake. Oh. Yeah, I switched yeah. Uh, elements so, a little bit too early there. What just happened there is uh, we lost our level three, which means that we can't just uh, switch over and heal one gun now. We have to build up that meter again. Uh, so you see, yeah. uh, whenever you defeat an enemy, Oop. you're going to see that meter light up. Oh, okay. um, you see that red at the very top center uh, fill up. Um, and it fills up the opposite Oh, meter. shoot. Oh, Lord. Oh, okay, that's so there bad. was a very recent save. So that's yes. good. Uh, this game uh, has quick saves. Um, you don't have to sit there for a menu or anything. You just pass by it and it will save for you. 
Um, which is good because it, you know, it doesn't waste any time getting you back in there. So we do have to go back the same way we were. We have to go uh, get that same spell and everything. So this is a minor setback, no biggie. Um, but yeah, you see that we have that level three lit up. That means that whenever we switch over to uh, fire, um, we can heal on a whim just like that. Just with those cubes filling up there. So grabbing that yeah, will of the wisp big. again. Yeah, basically what happened there was on the way back, I got a little bit punchy about switching off of wind and back to fire. So I did it while I was in the middle of dashing through that second wind barrier. So I took damage, um, which uh, kind of screwed things up. Uh, but now now everything's good. We're back on track. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and uh, damage boost through that one, jump over that one. We're going to do the same thing on the next screen. We're going to just slide right into this and then jump over this guy. And then uh, that's going to take us to the save point. So now it doesn't matter that we took all that damage. Yeah, everything's good. You get your health refilled yeah. at the save point, which is very convenient. Um, another thing that's really nice about the elements is um, they do actually, what element you're equipped with has an effect on your movement. Um, so uh, the wind element gives you a hover ability. We don't strictly speaking need it because we can do this thing called knife floating. Um, basically, if you're stabbing downward with a weapon that's fast enough, it'll uh, arrest your downward motion. Uh, we use knife floating kind of a lot. You can actually even gain a little bit of extra height with it, so it can be used in a couple of skips. Ooh. Ooh, we there we go. We have an entire power up. Uh, thanks yeah. To, uh, yeah. Just on the back of the knife floating. Um, it's really pretty nice. Woo. And boop. Uh, and so now we're going to be moving into the first boss, Abram, the water dragon. Um, and Abram. That's uh, it. <laughs> yeah, so in uh, in the anime, the dragons guard the governor's treasures, which are um, extremely powerful magical artifacts that can do v various things. Um, Avram here, uh, like in the anime, guards the soul crystal, I believe it's called. Uh, oh, totally. Yeah, oh, don't, you know, everyone knows that. Yeah, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, kill that guy. So a, a weird thing about this particular item is that it spawns wherever Abram's head is, the soul crystal ball. There we go. Um, so it, you actually want to kill him where, whoa, ouch, um, when his head is on the right uh, of the screen um, so that the crystal ball comes bouncing to the left at you as you move to the right. Um, uh, and exit the screen. So. Yeah. Yeah. A little optimizations separate uh, the good runners from me. Um. <laughs> hey, stop that. Um, so, so now we, we have lighting. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So we um, we lit up this uh, warp room earlier, and y'all probably didn't notice because it was on screen for like a frame, but. Um, we want to light up a uh, certain warp room so we can get around a little quicker. Um, here again, we're just making sure we have the right, either uh, you know the salamander or sylph, uh, our, our orange or our blue, uh, lit up so we can pass through those things. Uh, these mummies, uh, like a lot of enemies in the game, have a certain weakness. This one is uh, for fire, so we want to make sure that we're uh, set to fire whenever we do damage. Also, uh, that kick, you can clip through enemies without taking any damage. It's only for the frames that you're parallel, pretty much. Uh, so like the wake up part at the end, like you can take damage. It's not foolproof, it's just like, if you do it at the right time, yeah. Those doors uh, can be a pain in the neck if you're not careful, if you get too close to them. Uh, coming into the uh, Piratus fight here. And Piratus she's the dark, the dark elf. elf. Yeah, she's very fast. Um, so the big thing with the Paradise fight is you you want to she has a weird death animation um, and so you want to lure her toward the right hand door so that you kill her this way um, so now she's going to do a backflip um, and that backflip we want it to be there so that it doesn't take that long and we want her to be very close to the exit so that she runs out faster and we regain control faster um, and that is the end of chapter one um uh, Stage two is where the any percent nonsense really begins. I'm probably going to shut up for now for a little bit oh. if you want to well, take over while I... Well, talking a bunch is my specialty, so I'll just I'll just jump in here. Um, so we're going to do a few errands here. Um, we just grabbed a weapon called the Zebra, and the Zebra has a peculiar little trait to it. You can bounce off the top of enemies' heads. Um, we call that a pogo. And we use that to get to locations that we're not really supposed to get to yet. You're supposed to get to that power up later. 
uh, when you have uh, more maneuvering uh, uh, things. But here, there's a lot of enemies, and we took a little damage. It's no big deal. We're going to start taking this down left route, um, make our way down to this kind of fiery section. Now, whenever you get to uh, an area with lava like this, you can actually stand in the lava as long as you're set to fire. Because fire can't hurt you. In fact, you can actually fill up the meter. Um, but if you switch to, uh, to blue, then it, it does hurt you, and it's, it's bad. Uh, those centipedes are annoying. We don't like them, so we just try to swing by. And we're coming into the Gene and Afrit fight here. Um, this one has a, a sort of a special strat to it. We want to try to isolate Gene here um, and get it to where they're pointed in the opposite direction so that when they try to throw their little tornadoes at you, um, they're not, you know, they're not landing anywhere on the screen. It looks like, uh, yeah, that's that's done. So we're going to do that for uh, Ifrit. We're going to float in the air and do some zebra attacks. Um, some overhead attacks. And we've got level 3, which is doing a little extra damage. It's going to speed up this fight. If you're not quick enough, then it, it'll roll over into another cycle. It takes forever. But that was a very good fight. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. And now we're going to grab this power up here, which allows you to do double jump. And, you know, this is this is very useful in Metroidvanias because it gives you access to higher locations. Uh, there's Ato walking off. He just said, hey, uh, you forgot your keys. Uh, not really. Um, Bye, Ato. Uh, Double jump yeah. is actually important for another reason. Um, so we are going to clip out of bounds uh, and uh, there are reasons that we don't totally understand. Um, the out of bounds clips do not work uh, if you are uh, equipped, uh, if you don't have double jump. Um, if you try to do the exact same movements without double jump, instead of going into the floor, you go into the ceiling. And this results either in you soft locking or uh, just not doing the clip correctly. Like, if you can escape from the ceiling, then that's great, but it doesn't help you at all. And um, we are going to do a little bit of backtracking here to pick up the only weapon that anyone ever needs for the rest of the game, um, which is uh, a, a, a funny little knife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you might also notice that Sabera will sometimes take damage on purpose while facing the other way. This will launch her across the screen and. Uh, you can, you can speed through enemies, uh, no problem that way. But here is a guitar, uh, very very fast little weapon. Um, yeah, and it's it's just a remarkable thing to get this early. Um, yeah, so if this were the, um, I just switched immediately to the guitar. If this were any percent no out of bounds, I would actually stay on the zebra for a lot longer um, to continue to use the pogo and not have to go through menuing every time I, uh, Nice. every time I change, but in any percent, we actually skip large, all of, a lot of the portions of stage two where we need the pogo. Um, and so that's um, that's why I switch immediately. Are time to seek a couple donations? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've got uh, four of them that have come in since we started to run. First one from uh, Bath Alice. I'm probably saying that wrong, I apologize. It says, uh, Cassandra, you're such a talented runner, you're going to nail this. Here's the researching autism. We have Rai Jitsu55, who says, Good luck, Subaru. Really uh, fun game, really cool run, really exciting. Uh, puts that towards naming Kane Edward. $40 from Muhammad X saying, uh, Get into something about sniping? Couldn't resist, especially when it's towards a great cause, naming uh, Rydia Misako. And Brash donates $25, putting this uh, toward name Kane Dragon. It's shooting star! Yeah, so for any of you who are uh, curious what just happened, um, so basically I went back into the room where we picked up the zebra initially, um, and then I slid underneath the stairwell, and while Deedlet was in a spot that was too small for her to stand up, um, I backdash canceled out of the slide. Um, and that caused me to, because I have double jump, clip into the floor, and that put me out of bounds. Um, and then I was basically able to navigate out of bounds directly to the boss room. The game has safeguard code that if you try to leave the boss room while the boss fight is going on, it basically just uh, drags you back in. Um, and so that's how we get back in bounds there. And so we basically just got into the boss fight there. Getting out, uh, back in bounds from out of bounds uh, can be a little bit tricky. There's sort of limited circumstances in which you can do it, um, which is why there are only two of these out of bounds clips uh, in the run. 
Um, but so that allowed us to skip an entire long section of the level in which we want would have otherwise had to go unlock all of the green doors in the in level two by finding a switch, um, kind of like switch palaces in Mario World. Um, but now we are on to uh, stage three. This is a fun plant and zombie. This is plants versus zombies, basically. Yeah, it's, 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 the level's called Plants versus Zombies, uh, and they haven't gotten season and desist yet. Right? No, I'm, we're just playing. Yeah. Um, we just call it level three. Uh, now, you might have noticed at the start of the level uh, that Sabera was kicking through some plants, and uh, those are actually really hard to do, those skips. Uh, I think she took damage a couple times, which is to be expected because it's it's tough. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Here we're grabbing five keys to start up the key hunt. Um, and they all kind of resemble uh, ghosts of your compadres here. Um, but we're going to clip out of bounds again. And there is a way back in bounds uh, just to the right here. You can slip under a thing that's kind of hidden behind the black area. Um, so we got to kind of reset for it. Here we go. Okay, Oop. and we're done. Oh, bonus will the west for you, just for the fans. And, Ow. uh, gotta be really careful here, but I think we're good. Yeah, so we made it to the next boss, or not quite. Uh, we made it to the next section, which is kind of a boss if you think about it. Um, <laughs> now, these gears, uh, if you hit them at the wrong angle, or like if you're standing on something and it kind of like throws you off, you can actually hit the gear the opposite way, so you really do have to have good aim for those. Um, and it'll uh, lift up the elevator for you. Also, we're going to slip by these shadow stalkers. Uh, they're like the worst because you forget that they're there and they uh, confuse you very easily and you're just like standing there taking damage and it's the worst thing ever. You're losing time. We're gonna grab so a there's a key. stun mechanic in this game, um, which is uh, if you get hit, I think, four times in rapid succession, um, Deedlet will become stunned like you are in a fighting game. Um, and so it's like slip state uh, for those of you who do uh, fighting games, um, but any of the like stealth enemies that are hard to see will stun you immediately upon contact um, and can stun juggle you. Uh, it's terrible. It's really bad. I'm going to take a safety save here and also um, uh, yeah, a do a little build. meter building um, yeah. on the meat there. Uh, normally we wouldn't take that save, but I was pretty low on health and uh, I didn't have enough meter for the boss. Um, Carla. Yeah, so here we get to fight the Grey Witch. We actually get to punch her uh, with our Katar repeatedly. Um, Carla, Carla herself is not that difficult, um, but immediately after this, uh, she's gonna summon a lackey to do her work for her. Um, and so Ooh, this one, yeah. this one's a little bit harder. I'm gonna focus here. So, yeah, here you see there's a lot of guarding oh, going on. Geez. Um, it's, it's kind of tough to, to uh, figure out when they're going to attack. It's usually consistent, but it, it's, uh, you know, then she'll, I don't know, hard to explain. Just fight her, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but it, if you know what you're doing, it's uh, quick, you can cross her up and attack her from behind, and she doesn't guard it as much, and as long as you're level 3, it's a pretty quick fight. Uh, running up here to get another key, uh, this is our third one. Um, it is faster to kick through these zombies. Again, you're invincible so long as you're parallel with the ground. You want to kind of, like, up and down in between uh, each zombie, so it's tough to line up, but here we go. It's the bear just ooh, that's like any damage. Yeah. The, the timing there can be a little bit finicky, and sometimes you do have to pause to let some of the zombies cluster together. Um, here, we actually don't need to use the elevator because we can use knife floating to gain a little extra height. That's one of those uh, nice little skips that I was mentioning that knife floating can get. Um, and now we're, we're done with key. three zombies at this point, yeah. Um, so we have one more key to gather, and it takes us through the Room of Shades, um, which we are going to be uh, entering pretty soon. Um, we'll just will wisp these to... They only form and can be attacked when you're facing away from them. They're like booze. Um, so I want to kill a specific number of these um, so that they'll drop their, their bow. So drops in this game are not random. They're deterministic. Um, uh, and so um, you have to kill a certain number of enemies in this stage, and then like the 30th kill in this case has to be the enemy that drops the item that you want. Um, and so these shades drop uh, an item called the Dark Bow. And the Dark Bow is a little bit weird because no matter what element we're equipped with, the Dark Bow fires dark elemental arrows. Um, 
And Dark Elemental Arrows are really convenient for us for exactly one boss in the game, but they are convenient enough for that boss uh, that it is worth getting. Um, and so we I take do, a little yeah. extra time. Oh, sorry, um, go ahead. Yeah, they're good for the boss. They're also um, apparently the uh, the enemies in the hallway just before that boss. Are also oh, yeah, it. some people do use it for that. That is, that's not the way that I do that hallway, but uh, it is definitely an option. There's a super tough hallway later, and there's, everyone has different strats for it. Um, I, I'm curious how Severo's gonna gonna blaze through it, because my strategy is just to die in there and lose a run. Um, oh yeah, that's a, a really common strat. Yeah, um, it's not the, the most champ. optimal, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but a lot. It, it's favored by a lot of runners. Um, oh, I actually did not kill enough of these. There we go. Yeah. There's my dark bow. So basically, so I did have to you, take a little bit of yeah. extra time for that. If you kill every single one of those little dark dudes, then um, you get uh, the bow. But sometimes just like you miss one. And more um, plant kicking. Ooh, yikes! Uh, and a little bonus kicking off the side there. Uh, but yeah, we're going into the uh, second Carla fight, and uh, she has a surprise guest for this one too. Uh, she kind of has the same attack pattern. Um, she's really, really easy to. to Ah, it would be nice yeah. if I was facing the correct direction, though. As long as you're stabbing in the correct direction, yeah, she's pretty good. Cool. Um, so she sends out these big flares. Who cares? Please, okay, go. <laughs> that was a little close because I missed a couple of stabs. Um, so now we're gonna fight the demon god, um, who uh, is demony. Yeah, quite demony, um, demon esque. Uh, also, she has uh, some pet gods and pet sword. And, uh, yeah. yeah, they don't really help uh, her very much. <laughs> yeah, so the demon god will fly away from the direction from, will always fly away from you. Um, and so if you're on her right, she'll fly left. And she can fly off screen to places where you cannot hit her, um, which really sucks. Um, it is, uh, like, one of the more unpleasant things that can happen with a boss in this game. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, you just, I, yeah. I need to stop talking for this stage, though. Oh yeah, I mean, I'll talk here. You focus on not dying in this impossible corridor. Um, oh boy. So that blue attack, uh, you can absorb it with blue, but it's hard to remember to switch to blue. And meanwhile, there's like this pink attack from this robe dudes. It's just, uh, this, this is one of the worst rooms in the game. But this uh, corridor easily. is pretty terrible. Um, but we do it because we want to pick up the Windstorm spell, which has a ton of utility later on in the game. We're actually not going to use it at all in this stage, um, but uh, at the in the last level, um, in the last two stages actually, uh, Windstorm becomes very useful. Oh, um, Parn! Oh no! Oh no, Parn! Our boyfriend is dead. Killed by the Dark or Elf. Or is he? He is. Well, I mean, yeah, he's totally <laughs> dead. He's completely dead. We're never going to see Parn again. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Hot night is gone forever. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, keep keep going with this. Um, with this stage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Those centipedes, by the way, if oh, you really where they're at, they'll they'll mess your whole day up. I'm uh, gonna pogo our way up here. Oh. Oop. Ouch. You know, or or do our best and. Uh, Get through there, and then we're gonna enter this. Uh, it looks like labyrinth zone. I mean, I was in the labyrinth zone. Um, but yeah, get... it really does. That's a good yeah. point. Da, 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 da. There's even an underwater section, so we're gonna grab this wind power up and it just makes your attacks cooler. And also, we're going to grab the breathing underwater bit. Yeah, so we mm -hmm. get we get underwater breathing here. It is literally only used for like two rooms in this stage. It is a very niche power. Um, but the alternative, oh, yikes, uh, we're going to reset that room so that this is yeah. a little more safe. Um, the alternative to that is buying potions and doing a very narrow and potentially deadly cross without the water breathing power uh, and basically just like letting Deedlet partially drown. Um, and if you mess up even one input, you die. Um, so that's not really ideal. I think it's really important to point out that it says crocodile on screen, but crocodiles' upper and lower jaws are of equivalent size, whereas alligators have a slight overbite because the upper jaw is larger. So I'm pretty sure that's uh, an alligator, not a crocodile, but nobody listens to me. Uh, here we're going to do a pogo and cross you there. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got some alligator fans in chat. Thank you. 
Geratology lesson for you. Um, or zoology, rather. Anyway, uh, let's live by that alligator, and we're gonna go into one of the coolest fights, uh, and one of the cool strategies, um, in the Nars. Game, Yeah, this dude. Or a gray dragon, as I, uh, forgetfully, uh, referred to him as. We're gonna fly over him and fling over to the very, very back and start doing insane damage on the back end. Um, everything, all the, all the hit blocks are all stacked together, and you just use your your zebra to do just yeah, damage to it. As long as you um, have a two-handed weapon equipped, you will hit multiple hitboxes on every attack there. Um, and Narsa's butt is extra sensitive, so... Um, yeah. Oh, I think we see one more alligator, right? Yeah, we see... Well, we see two. Chat loves um, alligators. Can I get some alligators in chat? <laughs> They're one weakness. Dragon's one weakness is butt touching. Um, okay. Which, like, is, you know, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I think that's a lot of people's weaknesses. But... See you later, alligator. After In a while, while alligator. Dial. After a while, alligator. So, all right. unlike literally <laughs> all other movement underwater, backdashing is completely unchanged by the... Oh, you're kidding me. Me never. Never. I'm only um by the water physics so backdashing is the fastest way to move in water but it's uh dangerous because of the alligators oh, wow most things are dangerous Rude. when alligators are involved yeah what is going on here uh the Thank game you. knows that you're trying to play in a marathon the game knows so... that i'm trying to show off so yeah it's kind um, of mind so of dash just slide and slide through all of these minotaurs and dark elves and valkyries. Uh, we actually don't care about that item. That was a little bit, I was a little, just a little late on the dash. <laughs> sure. Oh, yo, ouch. Bit. Yo, okay. Yo. You, you broke up the mummy convention. You're upset. I, I, I did, sorry about that. Sorry yeah, about that, mummy. Yeah, you messed up their toilet paper, so. All right, this fight's cool. Piratus says, rematch. Yeah, Piratus is cool and she's got new moves. New moves, new me. <laughs> well, mostly the same moves, uh, but then it's like, yeah, it's just a fire thing, and then it's like, oh yeah, uh, I went to uh, training camp and I learned uh, this thing, or shoot lightning and then fire and then win and stuff. It's pretty cool, yeah, right? Yeah, so fun fact, she will actually do that in the first fight if you give her enough time at low health, but there's not enough time for her at low health in the first fight. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. Um, but so now uh, we don't actually get to leave the stage at this point. Um, we get this really long cutscene because the reason that Pyridus killed our boyfriend was so that she could resurrect her boyfriend, Ashram, the Dark Knight. Because see, the Light Elf has the Knight of Lodos as her boyfriend, and the Dark Elf has the Dark Knight of uh, Marmo, I think it is, as her boyfriend. Like, it's total, it's parallel. It's a really, really deep. Yeah. yeah um, it's... This it's is actually this really is cool a really great part of the run because you get a break here. Yes, it's it's brief, but it's it's a good break. Yeah. Take a sip of your beverage. Mm hmm. Think about how cool the game it is. You can remember that you left the oven on. This game is furry heaven. Yeah, there's there's a lot of buff monsters in this game, and uh, the odd hot lady monster as well okay so we're gonna pick up a two-handed sword that we can't use right now here we're in a weird dream sequence at this point um it's actually very dangerous these things do a ton of damage if they hit you and we don't get any of our experience levels or powers um and these things can pursue us between screens they can break the rules um so uh, we managed to navigate through all of them by baiting them upwards. Um, now we have to face the faceless ghosts of our comrades, who all disappear on us one by one as we go. Oh, they are faceless. Yeah. I never noticed, I... actually. Um, the deal with the dice pixels? under the life bar. Uh, great question, Brash. Those are weaknesses and resistances. Uh, they indicate what elements enemies take more or less damage from. Um, an interesting fact about that is that um, the same type of enemy in a different position doesn't necessarily have the same resistance and weakness dice as its comrades. So like two zombies in different spawn positions um, don't necessarily have the same uh, same weaknesses and the same resistances. Um, 
So uh, that's that's something that's a little weird to watch out for. But things that are in the same spawn position will always have the same weakness. Like if you reset a room, the third gnome in the room will always have the same resistance spawn to spawn. Um, no crimson mallet said. Yeah, I find th this trick easier with the heritage, um, even though I'm messing it up now. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, I didn't go for that. That's way too hard. That, that one is really hard, and the Mimics do a ton of damage, and they, like, do a long grapple on you. So it's a big time loss if you... Oh, wow, I'm really pooching this. Um, there we go. Um, it's a big time loss if you get grabbed by them. So uh, it's, the it, it is a dangerous strat. <laughs> All right. Cool power up. Yeah. Wind. More, more windier. Um, and we're going to go... This is, we're on our way to the Ashram fight. Yeah, so we're basically just skipping an entire boss fight here. Yeah, sorry, um, Bell. Bell's kind of a good guy, right? Uh, not really. I mean, <laughs> on the right day. He was a good guy once upon a time, and then he got a demon sword, and it sucked. Um, I'm uh, going to concentrate on the quick kill for this fight, though. Sure thing. So we're, this is actually a two-part battle, uh, and all the movements are the same every time. It just kind of varies depending on where you're standing as he's doing it. Um, and he'll move away. Uh, you know, whatever, but we're stacking this, uh, wind spell on him. Here we're trying to plant him on the left wall. Uh, he'll just continually run into it if you do it right, and you can just stand there and just attack him. So the first phase is done. Uh, now he's gonna, uh, metamorphosize before our eyes into this weird green zombie-like creature. He's gonna be jumping around and trying to grab us and bite us and he's gonna, like, turn into gas and all this crap. We don't want him to do any of that, so we're gonna put a stop to it as quickly as possible. Um, so we're of course going to cast the wind spell and stack all that damage, knock off about you know fifth of his health, and then it's just it's just a matter of just getting behind him and hopefully doing enough damage at this point to prevent him from moving on to uh, a stage where you can't actually do any damage to him. Thankfully, we avoided that, and that was a really nice fight overall. That was just about the best version of that quick kill that I've ever done. Yeah, nice work. Thank you. That was good. Um, so now Peridus is going to come and show up and tell us that she's not mad that we killed her fake her fake boyfriend recreation. Um, and she's disappear. lying. She's lying. Why are you always lying? Why is she always lying? It's because she's, she's a dark elf. It's That's racist. Right. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. It's All like right. the whole thing with dark elves. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but hey, it's Parn. Where'd Parn go? come from and also where did he go um that bow behind that door is the bow of life it actually heals you every time you hit enemies with it um it is basically useless for our purposes so we're gonna we're gonna leave it there it sounds cool but it's not um it's the not game as cool gives you it like sounds. 20 bows at the end of the game and it's like i don't know which bow is this the best bow but really it's the dark bow dark bow is the best yeah um, we got that way <laughs> earlier as a drop so uh, there is another boss in this stage, but we skipped him. He's Beld. Um, and over by Beld, uh, there is another movement power that it's called like Windstorm. It's a super jump, basically. Um, and uh, we don't need it. Uh, so we're just not going to take it. And we're going to move on to chapter six. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, without... we want it. We don't need it. You know, it, 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 it's a really cool movement item. But yeah, it's a lot faster. You just don't go out of your way to get it. Um, yeah, just... uh, and we have uh, we have pogos, and pogos are cool and swag. So we're just gonna do pogos instead. Bogar kill. Uh, pogoing off this dragon. Oh. They've got pretty lenient um, pogo boxes, which is not a thing. I just made that word up, but uh, it's really easy to bounce off these dragons if you kind of understand how to pogo. It's not too bad. This is where we get into the real gauntlet of things. Um, ah, there's a hallway geez. coming up. Yeah, so taking any damage is like uh, it's not the best. Oh, you have a level oh, no. three. No, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so I think we're, we're gonna, gonna do take a, a safety dance here. <laughs> we're gonna keep reloading the enemy so they're not attacking us actively while our uh, health meter refills. Thankfully, Severa had that um, reserve uh, level three. So now we're gonna try to clip through here. Looks like we're doing the. Um, oh, they moved away. Oh no no and... no no. Yeah. So. This oh looking, shoot. Looking this is not good. not great. Really not good, I think. Oh, Whoa, and that's death. Okay, yeah. That so, so, all right. So that's gonna send us all the way back to chapter five, unfortunately. Uh, so that's a little bit rough. 
It's fine. It's not too long. I but... mean, that was totally intentional. Good job, Saber. You set up the secret, uh, secret setup that makes the, the game work. It's a manip. Totally it's an well. RNG manip. There we go. Yeah, That's our... nobody knows any better. Um, <laughs> no, but this happens a lot in, in runs uh, just because that room is such a hassle. And it can vary too, just the way the enemies react to you. They're all over the, the screen um, in different places, depending on where you were as you entered the screen. So, um, yeah. Um, so one nice thing about this game um, that I, I didn't mention before is the healing effect from uh, love, being equipped with a level three spirit um, runs even when you are in a cutscene. Um, so you can do that like as you're transitioning areas and before you regain control of Deedlet, you'll, you'll continue to heal, um, which is amazing. Like it's extremely, uh, it's a, it was extremely kind of the developers to do that. Oh wow, oh, wow. Geez, I'm really screwing up these man- the Oh, okay. Incredible. Those manticores, uh, there we go. I don't know. Maybe they're a little thicker than usual, I don't know. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and- uh, Let's do the safe strat. It takes like yeah. a few seconds. Okay, there we go. Basilisk. Easy, because you get a MP refill here anyway. Um, yeah, so there's a save point right here, so it's a little unfortunate that I didn't make it, but... Oop. Um, so yeah. in this room, um, dealing with these spinning blades is supposed to require super jump, but it really doesn't. You can just kind of hover through it. Um, and then this allows us to hit the... This is like a teal switch or something like that. Um, it's and the that... last door switch. And it gives you access to the last boss. You have to go... Like, all of that was in service of hitting that switch. So... Yeah. We, otherwise, half of that... Half of this level wouldn't even be required. Um, but this is the worst room in the game. Right here. Yeah. Um, there's one of those in Super Metroid, and there's one of them in this game. Uh, so we're basically going to... Oh, I actually did not really want that level, strictly speaking. There we go. Nice. Um, basically just pogo through that basilisk like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, Carla's going to show up. And now we do the boss rush. Yeah, there's a boss rush. The bosses are so good, you know? So why not um, have them twice? Yeah, uh, so uh, I turned out a little like, bit late, but there's there's still uh, the same like power level or whatever. So I mean, they the early bosses do go down pretty easily. They don't get any kind of buff that I'm aware of. Um, so it's the same deal. Uh, some of the strategies are just you know sometimes it's just spam the uh, the wind spell or you know. You you're doing way more damage because you're uh, high level. Usually in a casual playthrough, you'd probably be around like level like 50, 60, something like that. Yeah, um, so one thing about this game though is that experience levels don't help you that much. You do like one additional damage per attack uh, for for every experience level that you get. It's weird, um, but grinding is not like that important of a oh, thing in this uh, in this game. Um, but yeah, Windstorm rips through a lot of these bosses, and this is actually the main reason that we picked this up, was a couple of uh, couple of quick kills before this, and the boss rush. By the way, those things floating up top um, after each kill uh, refills your health, it refills your uh, magic meter, and it also refills your level 3 status in that order. Um, so sometimes... Uh, if we want to stack a lot of magic on a boss, um, we'll kind of use some reserve magic from the previous boss, to, and then we'll go and we'll grab the uh, refill again. Um, and that way we're able to do three wind spells instead of just two. Yeah. On one boss. Uh, so for Nars Mark II, we have to do this a little bit differently. We actually have to let him take some steps toward us. And then we can He's drop back over steps. here. Yeah. Um, because unlike the unlike his original boss room, um, if you, uh, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Um, if you let, if you try to do it, uh, do the quick kill against the wall, um, he will basically just murder you. You will take super amounts of damage instantly from his butt, um, and that will be the end of the fight. 
Um, it's really easy to lose what is otherwise a really good boss rush that way. Um, so uh, we do we do have to take that uh, that one a little bit slower. Somewhat decent Puritus. Okay. Uh, ooh, I cast the wrong spell on Belt. <laughs> That's not Yo, great. It's not gonna like that either. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, Belt's not easy. Don't... Just kind of walks around like, uh, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up and come. Oh no, he grabbed me. Yeah, uh, except for that okay, part. Good. That's like this one bad right. move. <laughs> oh, I. It's the boss chat. Yeah. Oh. Uh, please stop, 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 stop. Yeah. So as you can see, I it does a lot of damage. Like to not die. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, shoot. Now he's going to do the charge again. Um, and then he's going to do the barrier and rocks. Oh, and of course I lost my level three wind again. Oh, no, and that's going to kill me. I'm going to have to redo the boss rush. Yeah, so Bell's boss rush Bell is, part two. Bell is finicky. Um, so basically doing the, doing the quick kill wrong on him can be... Uh, really, just really bad. <laughs> um, I want to switch actually off of this. Yeah, uh, I want to have the Katara on. I, uh, I I belled. You didn't see that coming. <laughs> right, there we go. We're actually gonna cast this at the right time this time, and then that goes. That's for then Ifrit goes down very quickly, and we can basically just stab, 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 stab. Goodbye, Jin. That was much faster. Uh-huh. And shooting star. We'll go ahead and... Shooting star and the living's easy. Don't mind me. I don't... I, don't I just made a I'm terrible pun, so you kind of have, like, you know, free reign here. Um, okay, so... Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. I, I basically died intentionally there, so you could see more dragon. That's really yeah, what happened. Totally. Is that was... Like, I wanted to make sure that everybody got their fill of dragon. Um, so, I know, I was trying to, like, play it off all humble by being like, oops, I died, but, you know, I was, I was fine. We're, we're here. Here we are. Um, yeah. Really, though, like, these, these, these starter bosses are just, like, a formality. Yeah, they, um, they, it doesn't really, really start becoming different. difficult until, like, uh, maybe, like, Demon God here. It's just, like... Kind of uh, demon god is careful. basically just fire off a windstorm and stab. Let well, me know bit. what you're doing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dragging it out. I'm dragging it out longer. That's that's great. Thank you. Step, 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 and boop, boop. Yeah, boop, and butt touches. All right. I too explode uh, after, <laughs> after after. All right, after all right, all right, all right. Oh, that was. Do love the Puritus fight. Why did I do that? I don't know what I was thinking, but. The Puritus fight is pretty fun. I find myself messing it up more often than I expect to for like no particular reason. Speaking of messing things up for no particular reason. Yeah, this guy. I skip him and fired that. Now. I fired that off. A little too early. And there we go. All right. So now we're basically gonna try to do the boss. same thing with Ashram as he did as we did last time. These are pretty much carbon copy fights from earlier. So you're not that much higher level or anything, uh, you know, from five or ten minutes ago. So same strats, same amount of damage, and same hoping and praying. All right, there we go. Um, that was more or less fine. Um, because his back is not strictly speaking against the wall, he should jump backwards. That, that's. Um... 
We're actually going to get an extra windstorm in this position, which is really nice. A couple of extra windstorms, actually. There you uh, go. And that's just basically going to... That's the whole boss rush. Right there. That's, that's the boss rush. Um, so now we get to move on to uh, extremely... <laughs> uh, extremely weird platforming that was not meant to be done this way. Um, so you're supposed to have super jump for this. You're supposed It's supposed to be strictly required. Um, uh, but it is not um, because knife floating uh, and hover, hover strats. Um, and so now we're basically just going to go through a bunch of cutscenes of our compatriots uh, basically like reliving experiences that we had in Wonder Labyrinth, even though some of these cutscenes we actually skipped. Um, because by the way, just... by the way, this is this is all some weird dream thing. Um, this is not actually like real life happening. Sorry to spoil, but oh, you're yeah. gonna be fighting them here in a second. I don't want to be. Are anyone being confused? Like how? Why are you killing everybody? You know, are we the baddies? Uh, but no, actually, they're just figments of your, um, you know, whatever your imagination or whatever they got you going on here. Um, um, so I just I took a minute there uh, and I fumbled the menuing a little bit to switch over to the dark bow um, because uh, the one boss that I use the dark bow for is the first form of the final boss. It's a two-parter, as you might guess. And for some reason, the first form of the final boss is weak to darkness. It is uh, maximally weak to darkness, takes double damage from it. Um, so uh, basically we're going to be, yeah, hence the dark bow. Also, if you take zero damage, cool thing. Oh, hello. Hello. So let's just shove dark arrows into the sky from behind. Nope. Turn, turn around, please. Oh man, game was uh having some fun with you. Yeah, I was having some fun with me, but I didn't take any hits from the. Oh no. There we go. All right, cool. I did it. Nice. All right, so yeah, I didn't did take any damage. Oh, yeah. So there's a sword floating there. That is Parn's sword. Um, my boyfriend's sword. Um, it is the highest DPS weapon that it is reasonable to get in a speedrun. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pick that up and whack the last boss with it repeatedly. That was developer intended, you would think. <laughs> there we go. So Niall is... Uh, an interesting boss. Uh, there's all these like floaty things that are gonna come out and uh, oh, do damage to you. This is so much stuff on screen. This, it basically is Ikaruga at this point. Um, you have to uh, jump around those gray things and not jump into uh, you know uh, one of these pinwheels uh, with the wrong color, or of course you take damage. And it's bad. Uh, we're also trying to minimize just not just you know for speedrun reasons, but also just to avoid like stronger attacks. We want to make sure that we just stay as quickly as possible. Oh, so there's a little strat, of course, for every every phase. Here, this is probably the hardest one to do any damage in um, because you're so busy trying not to take any damage. And uh, so much going on. We got the purple cannons and all that fun stuff. Purple stuff. Ah, jeez. And those those columns of, of purpleness, which we all know how much purple hurts. Um, you don't know where they're gonna like how far out they expand just because they have much bigger. Uh, with then you remember uh, that the ideal strat here is to just kind of float up with blue and dance around the orange, um, the orange bit, so you don't take damage, and just try to stick next to the eyeball and do all, all that cool damage to it. Um, looks like we'll probably uh, kill it here. Yep, there we go. Yep. So, uh, that is now not, time not yet. over. Not over. Timer's still done. Um, there's a little epilogue section. Yeah. <laughs> So we have defeated the final boss and we are going to escape from the labyrinth here and Deedlet is going to have a, a touching conversation which is either the soul of her dead boyfriend, um, P.S. Parn actually died in real life, uh, which is why the labyrinth got created in the first place. Um, uh, or like maybe it's just her imagination of the like soul of her boyfriend. I don't know. I don't really... I'm sure some uh, astute scholar will figure this out one day. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get a lore or video. Just, or we can just read uh, the text of the end, which is you know not to spoil yeah. anything, but it's not yeah. the most it's not the most illuminating ending either. Um, even though screen fades away, but yeah. 
We have like, oh, like not even a minute left here to... Um, yeah, so, um, you know, the, the Labyrinth vanishes, we get this really slow fade out. Just like, look at this slow fade to black. And... This looks awfully familiar. Um, funny thing about waking up here is that the um, cabinet that that two-handed sword was in is broken. Um, depending on whether or not you broke it in the dream sequence inside of the dream. Uh, so, I don't know, chew on that for a little bit. Um, but now we're back in the real world and we're basically just, we don't have any of our movement powers anymore because the, the labyrinth where we got those doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but we're basically just going to backdash through this hamlet all the way over to this stone. And uh, that's time. And you didn't softlock either. Yeah. I have never softlocked, actually. I have. Um, I, have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I've never gotten that soft lock to happen. Um, thank you for the GGs, everybody. Uh, sorry uh, that we didn't have that much time to fit donations in, um, but if you have some, now might be a good time for it. Oh, the very fast race. I didn't want to interrupt because it was amazing to watch. Uh, I did have two donations come in very, very end. Uh, $80 from Just Fruit Salad, it just says Dragon. Uh, and then uh, Quasi Otter comes in with $5 saying, this Furryvania game is awesome and commentary has been so good heart. Thank you all so much for the GGs. Thank you to uh, the wonderful hosts of this marathon, to the wonderful host of the segment, uh, to Chu Chan for, for commentating and helping Phil, um, uh, especially with the like multiple deaths that I took that run. Uh, so sorry, sorry about that. Um, I will get over it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for watching um this has been super fun i love fast as furs and it has been an honor to get to run again now in in what is 50 percent of the fastest furs marathons that have been put on um so uh thank you thank you <laughs> thank thank you for showing off this wonderful run it was it was amazing to watch i'm glad i was able to hosting us for it um as i said uh this was uh Sabera doing Record of the Lodos War, the Lit in the Wonder Labyrinth. Uh, and we will have our last run of the night coming up shortly, which is going to be Final Fantasy IV, any percent no credits warp uh, by Wag the Dog. I'll be back shortly with that.